All right, now I've persuaded you that we have to do some math, that it's an important and necessary part of this course. What's the math we're going to do? Well, there are a few key mathematical ideas I think we need to cover. Uh, these are all in uh, Appendix C of the reading, so I'm going to kind of parallel that and try to emphasize some of the highlights. So, first of all, we need to be able to deal with scientific notation. Next, we will talk about, we want to deal with uh, mathematical units and unit conversions. And finally, we want to be able to do calculations involving time, distance, velocity, and the speed of light. Time, distance, and the speed of light. Those are the three key mathematical ideas that we'll be starting off with today. So, first and foremost, let's deal with scientific notation. In this course, this is a course in astronomy, we're going to be dealing with really big numbers, huge, giant, immense numbers, and sometimes really tiny numbers as well. So if I want to write a really big number, 297, oh, that would be a million, let's make it billion, I mean, that's, that's a huge number there. We're going to deal with big things, the number of stars in the galaxy, the number of galaxies in the universe, that kind of stuff. So how in the world do I, do I deal with big numbers without having to waste my time writing all these zeros? I write this in scientific notation. In scientific notation, we write it as one number times 10 to the power of something. And so you got to figure out what the first number is and what 10 is to the power is. The first number must always be somewhere between 1 and 10. Can't be as much as 10, and the smallest it can be is 1. So what I need to do is I need to take the decimal point here and move it all the way over to, uh, let's see, between uh, 1 and 10. This has got to become 2.97. And the power of 10 will tell me how many decimal places I have to move. I have to move 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 decimal point places puts it right here. So I have 2.57. So what have I got there? So 3, 6, 9, 10, 11. So this is times 10 to the 11th. So that's what I have in this case. My number is 2.97 times 10 to the 11th. So you can see it's a much more efficient way, of a very good way of expressing a very large number. Similarly, I can use this with really small, tiny, tiny numbers, like small decimals. So if I've got something like 0 0.0000613. Again, I don't want to waste my time writing all those zeros, so what do I need to do? I need to write it out as a number times 10 to the something. Well, let's see. The number, since my first number here is a 6, well, so this is going to be 6.13, which means I need to move that decimal place all the way over next to the 6. So that's got to be 1, 2, 3, four, five, six places, and since I moved it to the right, this is a really tiny number, this is 6.13 times 10 to the minus 6. Negative exponents on the 10 meaning, mean I'm dealing with very, very tiny numbers, tiny fractions of things. All right, there we go. There's a couple of quick examples. If you have difficulty with scientific notation, let me know. Give me a call, talk to me, send me an email, send me a posting, something on there. We'll help you figure it out. Next big concept is we need to do we need to do things where we need to be able to do uh, units. We're doing math, but this is not a math class. In math, we deal with numbers for themselves. But here, in this course, this is astronomy, so what do we want to do? Our numbers represent things. They represent specific things. So I need to tell you not only the number, but what units it is. Like, for instance, I can measure length in all sorts of units. I can use inches or feet or yards, or uh, going metric centimeters or meters. I can do all the way out to miles, kilometers. In astronomy, we'll use units like light years, and parsecs, and megaparsecs, and AU to measure very long lengths. And so if I write down, I want to tell you how far away the sun is, I'm not going to tell you it's 93 million. I have to tell you it's 93 million miles. 93 million Miles, whenever we write down a number in this course, whenever we write down a number in this course, write the number down and then tell me what it is. got to stick the units after that. If I just tell you the sun is 93 million away, well, what is that? Kilometers, yards, cubits, what are we talking about? No, no, we need to say it's 93 million miles. Oop, let's put that in scientific notation there. This has got to be 9.3 times 10 to the 7th miles, but suppose I don't want it in miles. To really understand units and use them well, I need to be able to convert from one sort of unit to the other. So suppose I don't want it in miles, I want, oh, in this class, if we're in the sciences, we're going to use a lot of metric. I want to put that in kilometers. So to convert this, to say, well, it's 93 million miles, how many kilometers is that? 
I need to do a unit conversion. I need to find the equivalent amount in kilometers that this is. So first I write this down. Next I need to find the conversion factor. There's a bunch of conversion factors in your book and Appendix A has a whole bunch of them in there. In this case, I happen to know that there are 0 0.6 miles equals one kilometer. Now when you do the unit conversion, you're going to do one of two things. You're either going to take your base number, 93 million miles, and either multiply that by 0.6 or divide that by 0.6. But we need to know which one it is. And I can show you a trick so that you always know what it is. Do I multiply by the... So we found the factor here. The special number we're going to use is 0.6. But what do I do? Do I multiply or divide by that? Let me show you how you always know. I'm going to write my 93 million miles, 9.3 times 10 to the 7 miles, and I'm going to write it out as if I were going to multiply and as if I were going to divide. 93 million miles, and here's how I'm going to do. I said before, I found my conversion factor, 1 kilometer is equals 0.6 miles. I can try writing 0.6 miles above 1 kilometer, or 1 kilometer above 0.6 miles. If this top expression was right, I would multiply by the 0.6, because you know, just straight across and there's a 1 downstairs, or if the bottom one is right, well this is multiplying by 1 over the 0.6, one divided, this is dividing by 0.6. This expression says take 93 million miles and divide it by 0.6. And the way I know which one's the right way to do is I look at the units. Up here, I say, okay, miles multiply and divide just ordinarily, so this is miles times miles divided by kilometers, so that means my result would be miles squared divided by kilometers, that's not right. But downstairs, look at this, I have miles times kilometers divided by miles. Miles above, miles, miles will cancel out, leaving me with an answer just in kilometers. And so based on this, I can conclude that this is the wrong way to do it, and that's the right way to do it. That for this particular conversion factor, since I need to put the 0.6 miles, that 0.6 miles needs to cancel with those miles, I need to divide by 0.6. Let me grab my old trusty calculator here and see if we can actually get a specific number on this one. We have 9.3 times 10 to the 7 miles divided by 0.6, and I know that my result is going to be 1.55 times 10 to the 8th kilometers, 155 million kilometers. That's the distance between the Earth and the Sun. So there we go. This is how we do unit conversion. If you write it out in both ways, you can, you'll never make the mistake of dividing when you should multiply or multiplying when you should divide. So that's how we do unit conversions.